China has decided to limit gaming time for children. And honestly, the dad in me is in favor of this. I know, I know, I know. It's not liberal. But I tell you what, man, just before we begin this, right? I don't let my kids play games. Like, I don't let my son play games at all during the week. And uh, if he's been good all week, then he can have a couple of hours on the weekend playing games on my phone. How old is he? Six. You're a cruel man. No, I'm not. I'm a responsible parent. And he'll thank me for it when he's older and not addicted to video games. But anyway, so, uh, and, and to be honest with you, right, I, I, it's not even that unreasonable what China has done here. Like, not that, I, again, I don't think they should be the one, I don't think the state should be the ones making this decision. But to be honest with you, the Chinese state is more permissive than I am when it comes to kids and video games. So uh, just saying, <laughs> <laughs> my, my household regime is more oppressive than China's. Uh, anyway, so online gamers under the age of 18 will only be allowed to play for an hour on Fridays, weekends, and holidays, China's video game regulator said. So uh, apparently between 8 p.m. and 9 p.m., uh, these are specifically, I think, online games, actually. But uh, So one hour a day on uh, Fridays, weekends, and holidays. Uh, it's also instructed gaming companies to prevent children playing outside of these times. And so uh, a state media outlet had branded online games a spiritual opium. And inspections of online gaming companies also increased to check the time limits that are being enforced. Uh, earlier rules had previously limited children's online game playing to 90 minutes per day, rising to three hours on holidays. Yeah, there's no way I'd let my son play video games 90 minutes every day. No way. It's just not happening. I play way more than that. Yeah, but that's because you're an adult. Yeah. And you have a job. So you're right. responsible all through the day, and then afterwards you get to just chill out and do whatever you like. When I was a kid, I played way more as well. Yes, and that probably shouldn't have been the case. I didn't much else to do. Go out and play. Socialize. I didn't like climb trees. Street. Yeah, well, that's there we problem. go. That's, that, that's I, I do like how they're bringing up opium. Like, they're never going to get over the opium wars, are they? Well, um, <laughs> they're also, you know, communists. So, opium, no, I, opium I, of the masses as well. Sure, but I think it's probably so, a reference to the opium wars. It could be both. It's destroying China's The Chinese culture. Communist Party may well be referencing it as a sort of, like, new religion, essentially. So, but it, it may how, well... How the hell are they going to do this, though? It's just like you're playing your game, it starts at eight, and then it just kicks you out at nine. I guess so. I mean, you know, I don't think it's physically difficult to achieve such a thing. Well, everyone's just going to get a VPN, surely. Well, they already do, so. Yeah, okay, but then you're risking the ire of the Chinese Communist Party. They'd just be like, look, we are genociding a bunch of people in a Western province. Do you want to be one of those people? You'd be like, no. From what I've heard on the ground, they don't have that much of an impact. No, I'm, getting sure, people I'm, people I'm sure they don't. I'm, just, I'm obviously being hyperbolic. But uh, anyway... So uh, the the share the value of shares in China's biggest gaming firms have fallen apparently <laughs> in response to this, which is no, yes. na naturally. Uh, in, in July, Chinese gaming giant Tencent announced it was rolling out facial recognition to stop children playing between ten o'clock and eight o'clock, ten o'clock at night and eight o'clock in the morning. So you're not going to be playing video games all night because literally the facial recognition software will prevent you from doing it. I mean, doing it wrong, right? I don't approve of the methods that China is using here right. at all, but I understand why they want this. They never cease to amaze at how far they'll go, will they? No, I mean, mm. they they are literally Nazis, to be honest, in almost every way. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so th this is, um, they say, by imposing the new rules, the Chinese government is hoping to create a positive energy among young people and educate them about what Beijing considers to be correct values. So it's a weird kind of communist conservatism. Oh, no, the future. Can't have that. Return to tradition, said the Chinese Communist Party. Bizarre. So it's a strange world we have entered yeah. into. All communist parties end up going fascist. Yes, they do. Uh, but again, fascism is not about traditionalism either. Anyway, no, that's true. while many Chinese parents may applaud the gaming restriction, and parents elsewhere, um, some on China's social media <laughs> Weibo <laughs> criticize government interference as being unreasonable and arbitrary. Why don't you plan when I go to the toilet, eat meals, and go to bed, said one sarcastic comment. No, you're missing the point. It's not for adults. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to have to be a defender of the policies of the Chinese Communist Party. Um, but I actually really do think that children should probably have less exposure to video games than they do have. It's fine for adults because you're an adult, you're in mind of your own, you know, world and things like this. But children don't have the kind of self restraint and personal understanding that adults do. They will eat as much sugar as they want. They'll play video games as much as they want. They'll they'll you know stay awake to all hours of the night. And it is up to parents to enforce a regular regime so they are habituated into good 
behavior, right? And this is what the Chinese Communist Party is trying to impose. Now, I don't think the government should be imposing that. I think the parents should be imposing that, which is why my regime is more draconian than theirs. I'm very skeptical of your regime, but the, the thing I find interesting is that they're my trying to... My very happy. I'm sure he is, but I, I would be miserable. But anyway, that's not the point. The, the, the thing here is just the, the idea that they're specifically toggling online gaming, not offline gaming. So you could carry on playing offline games, just not online games. Yeah, it seems that way. So I wonder if this has more to do with loot boxes, actually, in my mind. Could do, but they don't mention it, so I'm not going to assume. I mean, I don't think the Chinese Communist Party are going to beat around the bush. We're totalitarians. Why would we lie or put up a front? You're going to do what we want, because we're literally in control of everything, and if you don't, we'll shoot you. Sure. Well, yeah. a good side effect is also hopefully kill the loot box industry somewhat. Yeah, I agree. I don't like the loot box industry either. Um but uh, but since I don't let my son play video games, it's not my problem, you know. Anyway, so uh, China has generally been out on patrol, actually, and I've got to say they are speaking to some genuine problems, even though I totally disagree with their methods. Uh, so the the Chinese Communist Party, as the Wall Street Journal uh, point out, uh, moving to aggressively reassert control of the economy, uh, going after some of the country's largest private enterprises, and then drive to dial it back after as what they see as capital capitalist excesses of the previous era, uh, and so now they're in inserting themselves into the private lives of Chinese citizens to an extent not seen in decades. So this week they unveiled the uh, online gaming thing, and uh, the restrictions come amid a crackdown on pop culture icons and follow moves to sharply, sharply limit after-school tutoring. That's weird, isn't it? Limit after-school tutoring. Uh, taking together these That's moves... very bourgeois. It is very bourgeois. And it's, but again, as with any fascist regime, after-school tutoring is something outside of the control of the state. Mm. It's individuals engaging in free enterprise, private sphere of life. I mean, it's horrible that this is all this for the Chinese people. It is good news for the West. Because, I mean, the, the fear has been, of course, China overtaking us. And if they just cough their kneecaps... Well, I mean, I, yeah, I suppose if they're like, oh, we can't have you learning things. Yeah, but also if they're kneecapping their own economy. Yes. Well, that's, mm. that's true. Um, but anyway, taken together, these moves represent a shift in the social contract that existed under Mr. Z's two immediate predecessors, in which the party expanded personal freedoms in exchange for acquiescence to the party's monopoly on politics. The party says its aim is to actively shape the next generation of Chinese people. Because they're fascists. Yeah. The new man. Yes, exactly. Uh, on Monday, uh, the state-run Xinhua, I can't pronounce that, news agency, describes the new online gaming rules as an effort to protect the physical and mental health of minors, uh, a move that came, of course, when they called it the opium of the mind. And honestly, there might be something to that. I, d I do think there probably is a problem for especially very young children playing excessive amounts of video games. I think it probably isn't healthy. It's probably the same sort of thing as like watching porn as a child and stuff like this. Just good. A, it's incredibly unwholesome, and B, it's probably genuinely bad for like mental development. I'm not sure I agree, but I think this also is very regional. The, you know, the, the phenomena we've seen coming out of the East of people being, uh, having to go to like counseling to get them unaddicted to playing online mm -hmm. MMOs and stuff like that, or people wasting their entire lives. Yeah. I mean, the, these stories largely come from like Korea, Japan and whatnot. Maybe yeah. there's a example of it in China as well. But I, well, I, that, that's the point though. If, if young, you know, if, if like, you know, children are becoming addicted to online gaming and various other things then i mean as a parent you should have been taking steps it shouldn't have gone that far uh, but it, i think it does indicate that there are problems for these things for children i think they're fine for adults obviously you know and i don't want the government doing any of this but uh, i think they are speaking to a real problem and okay that's fine it's just that when the sort of chinese communist party have identified a real problem well they come down with a hammer obviously rather than taking any appropriate action but uh, anyway, the uh, the way they, 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 they're they looking at this is uh, they've also gone after the other influences on the lives of the young that they deem harmful. Uh, among them are for-profit education services, as we've talked about, that have added school pressures and a pop culture industry that Beijing says has fostered an unhealthy culture of celebrity fandom around what the state media terms as effeminate male stars. <laughs> K-pop. That's what they're going after. Godspeed. <laughs> I mean, I'm not even angry about it. Like, uh, just I, they're not wrong. That's the thing, right? They're not wrong. Uh, they say the youth represents the future of the motherland, uh, and uh, ensuring uh, the health of Chinese young people touches upon the nurturing of a new generation uh, of man for the rejuvenation of the nation. So it sounds very fascist, but they're not wrong that you probably shouldn't have your kids watching a bunch of effeminate men dancing on stage. 
So I just think that's, it is unhealthy. I love that the CCP is being like, yeah, good times make weak men. We need hard men. <laughs> it's literally where I'm at. But uh, it's, a, the, the, it's a truism. It really is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the government's recent focus on children for whom the party says it fears are being inundated with toxic culture that poisons their minds, isolates them from society and saps young boys of their masculinity. And they're not wrong, are they? That's the thing. This like, is a real problem. The the Western version being fanboys. Yes. Fanboy fascists mostly, but... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why they shouldn't have access to the internet, play video games, or watch <laughs> effeminate pop stars. Uh, I mean, you, you know, we, it's weird how we can agree on there are some problems, but your solutions are just like, yeah, just, it's just not the internet. Well, it's, 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 you know, my, my solutions at least are done on a social level and not this level of the state. Uh, I don't know if there are any real solutions that no. aren't that sort of thing but i i'm not agreeing to that sort of thing ever yeah so. uh so yes uh he uh xi jinping uh said this uh new direction at the china's annual legislative meetings in march when he told delegates to be wary of addiction to online games and other quote dirty messy things online that could have a bad influence on ch young chinese people well to be honest with you like teenagers watching porn online is a real problem like there, you can find lots of studies that show that it changes the way that the brain chemistry works and it basically abolishes their ability to form meaningful relationships and that's really not good for them like it's it's a it's actually a genuinely bad thing um and they you know you have to go to therapy for this sort of stuff and it's like there is no solution though well not allowing them to be able to do that in the first place i mean place. smashing the internet for children is uh one option well no you don't have to smash the internet you can just not allow your children on the internet yeah that's what i mean like yeah. that's one option i, I which not is the sure. option i'm taking okay <laughs> Why would you want them to be on the internet? I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on the internet. For adults, yeah. No, for kids as well. I mean, like, like mostfungames.com was my favorite as a kid. Yeah, and, and maybe if, you know, on a weekend, if the child's been good, you can sit there and play them with them or whatever and watch them. But you don't just want them to have, here's, here's access to the internet, enjoy. That's a terrible idea. Hmm. There's all sorts of awful things on the internet that you definitely don't want, like, you know, especially my son's six, so I definitely don't want him on the internet. But I'm not happy with my 12-year-old daughter being on the internet, to be honest. I get that from a parent's perspective, from a kid that grew Absolutely up on the not. internet. I like, grew up on the internet. I know, but it's... it's. It was I a lot different then. Sure, it'd be, it'd be less, like, you know, gore and whatnot for you, I imagine. Well, yeah. But then I never really went looking for that sort of stuff anyway. Right. I bet you could have found it if you'd wanted to. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, you just, yeah, I just remember dial-up modems. Uh, anyway, so uh, they, they, they also um, have something, uh, an app, right? So to help their favorite, the favorite stars rise up the rankings on Twitter like White Weibo platform or on short video app Douyin, uh, they, the circles of fans engage in frenzied competition to repost, like, and comment on content about their favorite idols. Authorities have said the competition often led to online trolling and excessive purchases of consumer goods promoted by celebrities. So on Friday, it banned the ranking of celebrities by name on social media platforms. <laughs> Which honestly, I think it's just based. <laughs> just uh, go. Like the CCP is known for this as well. Just yeah, like randomly, just that's banned. Just, <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I'm just pro banning celebrities at this point. I think. Right. I mean, let's just, just look. General. Just look at them. Right. Look at all of them. Uh, vote Democrat. And Alyssa Milano came out the other day, literally yesterday, and was like, "I support Joe Biden. I think he's doing a wonderful job." Bitch, you're played. To, you you get paid to pretend to be other people. Your opinion is totally worthless. We don't need to hear it, ever. And also, Joe Biden's doing a terrible job. I feel more, more like you're for the, the stance that actors should only be allowed to act and musicians only allowed to do music. No, 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 not only allowed. What they should be is considered very much the same as they were considered in Roman society. Prostitutes. Yeah, lower than prostitutes. The right. rung below the prostitute was the actor, okay? And that's how things need to return. Well, they do prostitute themselves off of politics, so... Exactly. Yeah. They prost prostitute themselves on screen, you know. Uh, and uh, any actors listening, sorry. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny, actually? Porn actresses I've seen have had a higher standard than that. Yeah. Like, they were, I don't know, what was it? The, the Ted Cruz scandal where the intern running Ted Cruz's account started uh, liking, like, step... Uh, what was it? Like, stepbrother porn or whatever on the Twitter account. And then they, they all deleted it, and then the, the intern got fired. But then the, the person who acted in the movie was interviewed about all this, and she was like, yeah, I find it funny. I hate Republicans and Democrats. I don't know what they're trying to engage the sort of thing. But the, she was completely nonpartisan. She was like, I'm not getting involved in politics. Yeah. I'm higher than that. I'm a porn star, <laughs> not an actor. Well, <laughs> it, 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 interestingly, uh, porn actors would actually rank higher and closer to the prostitute level than yes. the actor level. 
So, uh, yes, yeah, so they can look down their noses and various other bits and bobs at the normal actors who keep their clothes on. Mm. Filthy. Uh, any, anyway... Right. Uh, so uh, they've, they've also taken aim at the influence of male celebrities who in, embrace a gender-neutral style, saying they encourage Chinese, young Chinese men to be insufficiently manly. Uh, the state-owned newspaper Guangmin Daily published a commentary denouncing what it called the spread of Niang Pao. Sissy pants. <laughs> Pop culture. <laughs> Sorry. How are they wrong? How are they wrong? Uh. This is like, what is it, Baiju? Is this a sort of white liberal yep. they have in their yep. vocabulary? And then Niang Pao is being a sissy. Mm. I agree. I don't think young men should be sissies. I'm sorry, I, uh, they're not wrong. The, I, I denounce being a sissy. Don't be a femboy, you absolute... Can't say any more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So uh, the, the, the new era needs healthy aesthetics, uh, the commentary read. Uh, a healthy social culture is crucial in the critical period for the formation of adolescence values. That's true. Well, you know, I don't like the fact that it's coming from a Chinese Communist Party mouthpiece, but that is a true statement about what it is to be a young man. Aesthetics are important. They are. And, you know, being a sissy is not good aesthetics, not healthy aesthetics. Uh, anyway, uh, attacks on insufficiently macho celebrities followed a notice from the China, China's Ministry of Education late last year warning that young Chinese men had become too feminine and urging schools to promote sports like soccer with a view to cultivating students' masculinity. Well, it's a real problem, and I don't even disagree. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast, The Lotus Eaters, you can go to prelotuseaters.com and get access to all our premium content. Things like our book club, where we examine classics like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World and examine the themes that underpin it. And now we're getting worryingly close to that. Or modern books like Mark Sidwell's The Long March, which is how exactly we ended up in the current cultural situation we're in and what conservatives can do about it. Or you can check out the other series we have, such as our Contemplation series, where uh, Hugo and Josh decided to, in the light latest one, have a look at uh, an examination on the ways that other elections have been rigged for no reason at all. Or you can check out our Epoch series, which is one of my personal favorites, because this is where I get to talk about history. And I love I love talking about just random things from history. And one of the great things we can do with this series is talk about those things that aren't so often discussed. So, I mean, you can talk about Xerxes' army, the vast army that invaded uh, Greece during the Greco-Persian Wars. Or we can go through things like Herodotus' view on the Scythians. Uh, who are they? You probably don't know, but they used to be quite an important people a long time ago, and they're very, very interesting. We've got some really good reports about them. Or we've got premium podcasts, which is things we generally don't want to put outside of the paywall because we might get in trouble for them, such as the list of things that Alex Jones was right about. Uh, or we do just very interesting discussions because there are things that we do lots of work on. Uh, another one is that I'm particularly proud of is where Christopher Hitchens, the famous new atheist, would have fallen during the modern culture wars because he probably wouldn't have been very woke. But uh, we also have lots of interviews and articles and other things on the website that you can sign up to enjoy, and uh, we th we're really proud of them. So if any of that sounds good to you, go over to lotuses.com and sign up for as little as £5 a month to support us, keep the show going, and also to get access to all the content. Thank you and goodbye.